G'day YouTube, one MJ here and welcome back. Right, Thursday afternoon here in Australia, market hasn't moved at all by the looks of it. So 2.04 trillion, hasn't gone up, hasn't gone down. BTC dominance risen ever so slightly, high 38% there. A little bit less volume, BTC price now hovering just under 42,000 still. I think this was about 40... 1,700 yesterday, so now it's 41,900, but again, still trending down generally. But again, fingers crossed, maybe we found the bottom. And ETH gas price is $6, super low. We haven't seen it at that price in a really, really long time. A couple of weeks at least. And it usually, unfortunately, doesn't hang around here for that long. So if you're trying to move some things around, oh, did it just jump up to $8? I think it did. <laughs> there you go, from six to eight, oh so quickly. All right. Last 24 hours, what's done well considering the market? There we go, finally showed up. Hasn't done anything <laughs> trading sideways the last 24 hours. All right, FTX token up a little bit, Theta Fuel up a little bit. We haven't seen that move up for a while. Terra Luna up ever so slightly. Nexo, look, a couple of moves there, nothing kind of too crazy. But as always, we'll take any kind of gain over a loss any day. But the gains, nothing kind of too special. What about the losses, considering we haven't really moved anywhere? All right, stacks down 11%. Uh, what is that? IOTEX. There we go, down a little bit. Ethereum Classic down a little bit. So one double-digit mover, couple of sort of high single-digit movers, and then really it's all just kind of mid to low single-digit losers. So nothing kind of too bad, which, you know, pretty much goes to show a sideways uh, kind of... Yeah, a sideways market, as, as it shows. Hasn't been up, hasn't been down. Some coins are up, some coins are down. But overall, they've all evened each other out. All right, so the Bitcoin chart. Let's go have a look. Now, very, very interesting what's happening here is on this line that I've got in this down uh, downwards falling wedge, now we're starting to trade just on the outside. But again, you could move this line ever so slightly. So, you know, whether it's really trading on the edge or just on the outside or just on the inside, you know, we'll give or take. But again, the trend is still your friend and the trend is still down at the moment. But what I'm looking for is I want to see if we're going to have a candle body close basically below 41,500. We haven't had that yet. We've had wicks that have come down. But we haven't had a candle body close below this kind of $41,500 level. So this is kind of that key area of support that we're looking for. Yeah, we might get some wicks that go down, flash wicks. But can the bulls hold the price? Because I just get the feeling like if we do go below and we break into the $40,000 range, again, with a candle body close, I don't think it's going to take too long. I think it's going to be similar to this. Once we sort of break down into here, we just fall down quickly to the next level. So that takes us down to around about $38,000. Now, a lot of people are saying that there's a fair amount of support around the $39,000 and $40,000 range. Well, the way this is going at the moment, I guess we're going to find out. My guess would be over the weekend sometime if we don't have a bounce before then. I think this, you know, sometime over the weekend, and we could get the bounce on the weekend, but I just get the feeling it's going to be over the next few days we're probably going to know whether this $40,000 level will hold. And again, I just get the feeling like if a candle body close breaks down below kind of 41500 particularly if it gets into this $40-ish thousand dollar level, I think, yeah, it doesn't take us too long and we come down to here because there's really not a lot in here. Don't get me wrong, there's little bits and pieces. Again, you could say here, again, the $39,000 range that people are talking about. It's not like there's nothing in there, but I just get the feeling like that kind of won't make too much difference and we'll end up down around the $38,000 mark. Now, will that be where we bounce from or... Is this, again, all just going to kind of play out to something like this? I guess we'll have to wait and see. All right, total, market, uh, total crypto market cap, again, still trading downwards as well. We're still stuck by this downwards uh, trend line here. We really need to break out of it before, at least for me, I can think that, all right, something's changed. But just because we break out of it doesn't mean we can't have fake outs and then again fall underneath it again. So that's something to consider. But again, we've been trading sideways for, you know, the best part of all this year. Look at that. There's 2021. Really, market cap-wise, we've been trading sideways since the 21st of February last year. 
We're only about a month away from that, ladies and gentlemen. A month and one day, actually. And we have been chopping sideways for a year. We've been lower, we've been higher, but just really kind of sideways. And again, you can move this line a little bit. You can say, no, nah, there's more kind of touch points down there. Or some people might say, oh, no, we need to move it further up to kind of a roundabout there. You know, wherever you like, let's just kind of go, no, nah, I like there. That's right kind of like my mark we've been traveling around in here again we had a really big dip but then we even had a breakout and now it's more just choppy sideways action so for me nothing to worry about yet but there's no conclusive evidence that we are going to fall to the downside or break to the upside yet this is the line i'm looking for in the total market cap how's ethereum doing much the same Again, it's rolled over and now it's just holding this line. We haven't seen a candle body close below basically $3,000. We've seen some wicks that have come down and the same thing, I just get the feeling like probably this weekend is going to be the test of whether we're going to hold or go lower. Now they may come down and test this kind of $3,000 level and then again, then we get the bounce or unfortunately it doesn't. And then again, I've, as I've said before, I just think kind of 2,800-ish, 2,900, I think would be a good place to have a buy order in. Now, never financial advice. I've got to say that every single video you've got to do you and make your own mind up. I've absolutely no experience in financial advising or anything like that. It's just for my time in the markets. I've got buy orders in there. <laughs> Basically, sort of a little bit between under 2,900. I think if I can remember correctly, it's about $2,856 or something like that. About $2,850 thereabouts. I've got a buy order in. Not a huge one, but I've got a buy order in. And then I've got another one down just above this mark here. I think it's a just under 2,700. Again, I've got another buy order, but then I've got some buy orders down around about here as well, because this is where I get the feeling, like if we're going lower and we might find a bottom, it might be here, but there's no guarantees in life. And I'm not even throwing everything uh, in at this price, because I just don't know where it's going, and I've gone over that before. All right, what about the other markets? Are they any different? No, unfortunately. Now, I did watch an interview with uh, Mike, Mike McGlone from Bloomberg, and he said he believes the stock market needs a 20% retracement for everything to kind of, you know, recorrect itself and start again. Well, that is kind of scary. This is a 20% retracement. Now, this is from the top. I don't know whether he's saying a 20% retracement from where we are now or just the actual top. But that means the S&P 500's got to come down to 3,854, and we're currently sitting around 4,532. So that is scary to think that we might have to see something like this. But I also wonder if that, where does that push us, push our price back to? So the 5th of March, 21. All right, where was Bitcoin around the 5th of March, uh, 2021? 5th of March, well actually that's going to be higher than where we were, so that one doesn't work, All right? what about the total market cap, 5th of March, oh, there we go, we're going to be right in around about here, I'm going to say around about sort of here, so what is that, 1.5 trillion, so will we drop down to that 1.5 trillion dollar mark? And as I said, I suspected that we might be coming down to about the 1.3 sort of 4 trillion dollar mark. Again, somewhere down in and around about here. And that's not too far from there. So are we going to see that kind of retracement? Unfortunately, if that's the case, altcoins are going to get absolutely brutalized. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not telling you to sell. I'm not telling you to buy. I'm telling you to make up your own minds. For me, uh, I'm a hodler, I'm an investor. You know, if some of my altcoins go to zero and never recover, so be it, I've had it happen to me before, but I know the ones that do do well, they always make up for it. And that's why I diversify my portfolio in cryptocurrencies. I don't just, you know, put all my eggs in one basket. And look, I don't put all my eggs in one basket as in everything's in cryptocurrency, although I have a lot more in cryptocurrency than I do in other places. So that'll be interesting. All right, around about sort of one point, uh, again, where were we? 5th of March, one point sort of five-ish trillion dollars. And again, my pick was maybe we find a low down around about 1.34 trillion down just around about here. We'll have to wait and see. 
All right, Dow Jones, industrial average though, exactly the same. So again, there is no safe market at the moment. Everything's trending downwards. Are we close to a bottom? Is this just the start? Is it an indicator of what's yet to come? <sighs> I wish I knew. I really do. I wish I knew. Uh, just as much, I wish you knew and I wish you could tell me what was going to happen because at the moment, I mean, the world is just in a standstill. None of us really know what's going on. There's so many global factors going on that it's really hard to, you know, decide, you know, is this, um, you know, pandemic stuff all finally over? Are we at the tail end of it? Is it going to get worse? Is there going to be a new strain that hammers us even worse? You know, does the Fed really start to tighten, you know, and raise interest rates and things like that? Can they do that? Or is that just a complete impossibility and they have to continually print? I mean, we know they have to continually print. They literally cannot stop printing. That's not the way our monetary system works. But can they, you know, reduce it to such a significant level that, you know, the dollar becomes the best uh, bet? Short term, absolutely. There's going to be times where the dollar's the best bet. Right now, the dollar's been your best bet for a while. But how long that lasts, uh, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. All right, some news stories though, and some good and some indifferent and, you know, some kind of bad. Grayscale Bitcoin Trust hits record discount of 26.53%. Now, I'd rather just buy Bitcoin, but if you're a sort of, uh, you know, more into the stock side, I mean, that is one hell of a discount, particularly if Grayscale eventually get a bought Bitcoin ETF, you're buying Bitcoin at a 20% discount. That is pretty good. And that's 20% from where the price is today, not 20% off from its all-time highs. We're already at that kind of discount as it is on the spot price. So that is one hell of a discount. Now, what's interesting though, is it goes somewhere down here. It says this is the low, the lowest it's ever been, like ever. So the, yeah, right here, sorry, I'm blind. <laughs> Biggest discount to the spot price of Bitcoin ever ever even in bear markets you name it so what's interesting about this is not always but at least somewhat uh, it can quite often be a a trigger for things to go up because it's at such a discount but that's not to say it can't go lower before it has to go higher but that's very interesting that the discount at the moment is the biggest it's ever been all right, uh, is that, oh, yep. All right, so Google hires PayPal executive to expand crypto footprint. Now this is to extend its reach into financial services such as Bitcoin credit and debit cards. Uh, I don't like the idea of credit cards. I don't care if they're paying you back in Bitcoin, it won't matter. A credit card is still a credit card and they're going to charge you exorbitant, um, you know, uh, premiums on that, you know, the interest rate that you gotta pay back. Bitcoin debit card, I do like the idea of that's different because you're only spending money that you got anyway and being rewarded for it. Spending money you don't have and being rewarded in Bitcoin, while the Bitcoin reward is nice, I don't I get the feeling like it's not going to make up for those credit things. So be very, very careful with those kind of things. Uh, again, never financial advice, that's my personal advice, but uh, yeah, credit cards, very, very dangerous. And, you know, unfortunately, it's something that most of us have to go through uh, and experience to really uh, understand how they work. I'm down to one credit card and I've had two at times. And, yep, yeah, I'll never go back to that. I can't stand them. So, yeah, my personal advice is be very careful. Even if a credit card is offering Bitcoin rewards, uh, it's still a credit card and they are very dangerous. But, again, this this leads towards where the space is is heading are we there yet no but there's so much of this stuff i mean we looked at the you know 69 billion dollar per uh, purchase of uh, from microsoft by uh by microsoft of activision you know for the metaverse space and things like that the hundreds of millions of dollars that were getting poured into vc funds and things like that and google's hiring their paypal executive to expand their crypto footprint there won't be regulation that comes in that crushes this industry. There just can't be. There's too much money, too much involved now. So if you're worried from a regulatory standpoint that crypto is going to be crushed, I just don't see it. There's too much money in there. But that's not to say they can't come down fairly heavy-handed that really put a, puts a dent in it and we can't see the prices go much lower before they go up. That's definitely something to just keep in the back of your mind that, you know, 
even again you look at these big companies they're pouring in you know billions and hundreds of millions of dollars they don't know that it can't go lower they're definitely worried that it could go lower don't get me wrong but they are looking long term and again i just want to stress to all of my viewers think long term you know do some research you know don't be you know too scared to get in there and you know just have a go but if something's not working and you've got to keep up their Twitter accounts and discords and things like that and make sure that they're continually uh, active and constantly trying to build things. And if it changes, and look, it could be Bitcoin, maybe that changes in the future, then you need to be able to accept to sometimes cut your losses and get out. I don't like to sell for losses, but sometimes you just have to, particularly if you've been unlucky and you, you know, you've bought at an all-time high and you just can't handle waiting maybe four years to make some more money and you're not guaranteed to make more money it's been that way with bitcoin but again the history doesn't always dictate the future but it's the best gauge we have but i've definitely bought some things at all-time highs like gala games and it's not that i don't like it but i just i was worried it was going to get hit really hard and it did and it's dropped a whole lot more from uh where i can decided to sell as well so you know that's not to say i won't buy back into gala games but again their tokenomics and the same with alluvium from uh, some things that I've read uh, in the gaming space the tokenomics yeah are not great they're quite inflationary and that is a concern that's not to say that they can't make money when they have a good pump but long term how they play out I'm not so sure so I need to do a lot more research and work on those kind of gaming coins but metaverse and things like that uh, they still seem pretty good at the moment but again that's not financial advice that's my personal opinion and the sandbox is kind of my uh, real pick for that but also sort of things like theta which is uh, having an upgrade to an nft uh, platform and they're bringing out a third token which is uh, going to be very unique uh, and chilies again not so much metaverse a little bit more uh, social kind of coins but also they're going to have uh, nfts and things like that and i'm sure they'll have a metaverse space so they're kind of my picks in those areas but again just because i like them doesn't mean that they're going to millions of dollars but they have held reasonably well particularly chilies it's still down uh, because everything's down uh, sandbox uh, again it's holding okay from where i bought it i did buy it near an all-time high but i have a lot more confidence in that uh coin not so much the project coin than gala games again it's the inflationary stuff that worried me about the gala token not where gala games is going anyway i've got a bit off track we've got to get i've got a bit to get through today secret network i spoke about this the other day so they have raised 400 million in a funding wave from new investors and it's aimed at expanding secrets application layer with DeFi, nfts and more now uh, it had multiple new investment firms acquire positions in the network including DeFi finance capital alameda research so sam bankman fried and that coin fund and hash key now secret has an ambitious plans for 2022 such as onboarding hundreds of thousands of new users and i don't know what h1 is i don't know whether that was supposed to be q1 or the first half of 2022 while launching hundreds of new acts again apps sorry like i was talking about uh shade protocol and their algorithmic stablecoin silk uh really bullish on that whole program so again have a look at secret network it's been slowly working its way up uh, but again the it's up pretty high so just be careful but i really like it and i encourage you to just go and have a look and do your own research before you get involved again there's still issues around you know privacy chains and things like that but as i said the other day it's not that kind of privacy chain it's not literally trying to hide everything it's just hiding the excess information that normally you don't need everyone else to see and there is access codes that you can give to people i.e the tax man and things like that but they can see all that information and if they need to see it fair enough so be it but you know every other man his dog doesn't need to know everything about how you're spending uh, where it's going the amounts that you have and all the rest of it and that's the problem with a lot of the cryptos is they show all that information by following uh, the data all right moving on hedera hashgraph so they are now going to move to open source instead of uh being uh open review now they're open source so i know there were people uh, in the space that this was one of their concerns with hedera hashgraph that they weren't open source code so everyone could look at it uh and you know confirm where things were going and that it was being done right and you know 
play with the code and test the code and all of that where it looks like now that's the way they're going the whole decentralized thing that really is the future i think anything that tries to be closed is going to struggle to be able to get ahead because people are just getting less and less trusting of big business and governments and banks and things like that so unless they're doing open source kind of stuff uh i think they will really struggle i mean i think banks are going to struggle in general over the next sort of 10 to 50 years uh, and probably a whole lot less but if they try and go excuse me to these kind of closed off blockchains where people can't see what's happening and you know review the code and things like that uh, i think they will really struggle but again that's just a personal opinion all right usdc has surpassed tether on the ethereum blockchain so tether's still the biggest don't get me wrong but on ethereum more people are using usdc and i think that comes down to just a little bit of trust people are still skeptical on tether uh and you know usdc you know regulated at least uh, and looking to get even more regulated whereas tether they've stu- you know they've brought out some reports saying that they're fully audited and all the rest of it but they're yeah still a little bit skeptical so i think you'll see a lot of other coins though start to do really well until we get some regulation and then i don't think you'll see quite as many stable coins unless they are following uh rules but again i don't think the banking rules that we have will be able to hold this space up i think they will simply have to come up with new rules but to start with i think it's going to be based on the old rules so that is something that stable coins will have to uh, be able to prove that you know they're kyc aml and all that kind of stuff and also physically backed uh by dollars uh somewhere i think is something that all stable coins because i don't think they'll come out and blanket ban them it'll just be too hard but i think if you want to be able to use them without being you know penalized for using ones that aren't abiding by this system they will have to have all that again aml uh, and that really means just you know your wallet or something will have to be you know linked to you and things like that but also yeah i just i think they'll reduce the competition and there'll be stringent rules about around it and you know the fact that tether was so big but that also had a lot to do with uh a lot of asia were really into tether and now that particularly china have you know faced a lot of bans and restrictions and things like that i think that's also one of the reasons why tether's losing some market share all right mastercard and coinbase are partnering up to make nfts more accessible to everyone so this is good and bad at the same time mastercard one of the big businesses you know payment platforms out there but also a credit card and so basically what's happening is you're going to be able to go to coinbase and buy nfts with your credit cards i think that is dangerous uh in all way shapes and forms because they are super speculative i mean crypto in general you could say is anywhere from speculative at least to super speculative depending on what you're investing in but nfts i mean that that, yeah i bought an nft i bought a couple nfts the crazy skulls really like it like the community and they're doing all sorts of things and so it's been pretty good so far but i haven't gone and spent crazy money on it and i certainly didn't you know credit is like leverage i haven't leveraged myself up to buy nfts thinking that they're, they're going to make me tons of money so good that you know again it's another avenue for people to buy these kind of things but geez ladies and gentlemen you know my personal opinion not financial advice but as close as i could give you to financial advice is do not buy nfts uh you know anything really on credit if you don't have to particularly speculative stuff like that you're probably going to get burnt the chances that you're gonna you know fluke it and you know buy something on credit and it goes 10x oh the chances are just so slim that it really is dangerous and just yeah stupid be very very careful with that but again another payment rail goes to show you where the space is leading all right this i thought was quite amazing an individual eth miner has hit the jackpot with half a million dollars in block rewards he he she they whoever it was got 168 eth for uh, mining a full block now what it goes on to say down here is this the lucky jackpot uh, on the ethereum networks marks the third time in two weeks that an individual crypto miner has hit the big time a bitcoin miner from the solo ck anonymous solo mining operation they got 6.5.25 btc for mining an entire block on their own on january 11th now two days later another solo miner also 
I got one and they had only three rigs. So, you know, what's six Bitcoin worth? It's, you know, a couple of hundred thousand. But here's what you need to keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen. Each miner had a one in one and a half million chance of mining an entire block. And the chances of two tiny miners managing the same feat in the same week have been estimated at one in a billion. So that really is, you know, all the luck kind of most likely used up right there. So look, it's great that small miners got those rewards, but don't think that, you know, the chances of that happening to you are high. It really is like winning the lotto. If you want to, you know, have a crack at it, you can, but you're probably throwing your money away. But that old saying, you know, if you're not in it, then you definitely can't win it. But for me, I'm not into mining in any way, shape or form. But, you know, congratulations to these solo miners because that's life-changing money right there. Half a million, you can really do a little bit with that. All right, unfortunately, there's been some bad news as well. So multi-chain hack worsens as loss of funds reaches $3 million. So a number of multi-chain users have said on social media platforms, including the company's Telegram channel, that multi-chain is not providing them with clear information on the ongoing problems or enough support. Now, there's sort of two sides to this. Multi-chain instructed its users to remove approvals for six tokens, warning that otherwise their assets would be exposed to a security vulnerability. So this is earlier in the week. So people were made aware of it. Now, whether they read, uh, you know, the the emails that they got or whatever it was uh, and paid any attention is a different story. They could have been away from their computers for a week or a few days. But the tokens that were an issue was Wrapped ETH, Perry, OMT, Wrapped BNB, Matic and AVAX. So again, there's so many different platforms out there. You know, you just got to be super careful with all this stuff and you never want to have too much money in any one place. You know, crypto is a risk as it is. We already know that. But if you find, you know, this new aggregator, DEX, whatever it is, please, you know, just be careful about how much you're going to put on there. You know, that, that kind of stuff, yeah, that, you know, the, the returns can be crazy, but usually the higher the returns, the bigger the risk. So that is what you really got to remember. And crypto already has pretty good gains, particularly when things start to go up, that, you know, trying to kind of double up on your returns yeah, it's great, don't get me wrong, until something like this happens. But there's also the flip side of this. So we know Crypto.com got hacked the other day and the CEO has acknowledged that 400 customers' accounts were hacked. But this is what I like. The same day, all the accounts that were affected were reimbursed. So there was no loss of customer funds. And this is what you want. You know, they want to have insurance and all the rest of it. And multi-chain... They have $8.8 billion in total value locked. So really, you would hope that they're going to come out and reimburse their, the people because it's only $3 million, or at least that's what we know of at the moment. So you just want to be you know, hopeful that if this kind of stuff happens, that it can the losses can be covered because sometimes they can't. Sometimes they can be catastrophic. At the moment, multi-chain with $8.8 billion total value and locked, you think should be able to cover this. But it's definitely a worry that they're not getting back to you know people who've participated on the chain and all the rest of it. Now, last but not least, a little bit of bullish news. So I've spoke about this before, but now it's starting to get a lot closer. 300 small US banks set to offer Bitcoin trading in second quarter of 2022. So yeah, maybe we might have to go down for you know a couple more months. And look, we could go down even into the early parts of 2022. And maybe even longer if we're in a bear market and in a recession and all the rest of it. But long term, things are looking up. The cryptocurrency is getting more widely and widely adopted. And eventually, once all the rest of the world comes on board and starts to buy this stuff, which they will, they'll learn like all the rest of us have of why... At least the good cryptos are better than the fiat system. Yeah, it'll push the space tenfold over the next decade, I reckon. I think tenfold, um, you know, is really on the light side of it. I mean, we're at, you know, what is it, two trillion at the moment? I think 20 trillion in the next 10 years is more than doable. I think we're probably going to go a whole lot trier, a whole lot higher. I think chances are we could start to push into you know, total crypto market cap going up into maybe a hundred trillion or more. Now, again, never financial advice. That is just me taking a bit of, again, what I like to think an educated guess on where things might go. 
considering how small this space is and how early, but also how transformative it is, all the good things about it. But, you know, we got a long way to go before we get there. All right, a bit of a long one for me, ladies and gentlemen, today. There was a bit to get through. Hope you enjoyed it. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Small gains to be had, but again, can they hold is the big question. And I'll see you next time.